Ah, greetings and welcome to our weekly educational rounds here at Seclair, an integrative holistic psychiatric facility located in Delmont, Pennsylvania. My name is Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist, and I am today I'm joined by two of my colleagues. On my left would be that's Stacy, and I'm a physician assistant student from Duquesne University. And on my right? Hi, I'm Maria. I'm a physician assistant student from St. Francis University. So we have Miss Maria and we have Miss Stacy with us today. And as always, what we attempt to do is present some type of material to your life that could possibly be transforming, not just a talk or a lecture, but something that can actually, you can use in everyday life. Uh, we were discussing earlier an allergy of what we attempt to do here at Claire, where we treat we treat people, we do not treat diagnoses. And uh, we were talking earlier about uh, people living a life black and white. Did, did, were we not? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, were we not, Stacey? Yes, we were. What, what would you say living in life uh, a black and white life would be? Maria? Um, boring, unhappy. Boring, unhappy human doing. Do you ever meet somebody, Stacy, that says, "How are you doing?" It's the same stuff, different day. Yes. Yeah, how sad is that? So the analogy is for those of you who have watched The Wizard of Oz, and there are some, believe it or not, there are some people who have not. So the idea is that uh, the beginning of the film is filmed in black and white. Stark, black, white, yes, no. Uh, and when Dorothy landed in Oz, which landing in Oz may be a moment of clarity, having an epiphany, arriving at a turning point in your life and making a decision to actually participate in life and do something with it, when she opened the door to Oz, what was, what was it? It was in color. It was in color, and absolutely. So our goal here at Seclair is to help people live a life out loud, help them to have a life worth living, help them to live a life in color, and participate in every single moment that they have. And keeping in that vein, we're going to continue on our talk about the 12-step recovery. Today we are going to go over steps four, five, six, and seven. And as a disclaimer, I want to let you know that I do not represent or speak for any 12-step recovery recovery group or 12-step recovery in a whole. All I can share with, with you is what experiences I've had and what works in my life. So, uh, when most people, have you ever had regrets? Yes. You've had regrets? Yes. Yeah. Maria, you've had regrets? I have. Right. Sometimes, however, regrets are fine, are they not? Yes. I mean, they're just, that's, so that's just what they are. Mm -hmm. However, sometimes people build and let those, let those regrets turn around into their head and what happens they can turn into guilt mm -hmm. and they can turn into shame can they not and sometimes with guilt and shame what what psychiatric issues what, what presentations can that make um you might be depressed absolutely mm -hmm. you can may certainly be depressed and anxious mm -hmm. not anxious and depressed over things that mm -hmm. you've done in the past so the presentation that we're going to make today is steps four or five six and seven. So steps four, we went over steps one, two, and three last week, which are commitment steps into this design for living, and steps four through nine are termed action steps, when you actually have to participate and do something, not just wishing and hoping, but as we always say, buying the ticket, buying the ticket. So step four is made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. So what we want to do is determine whether the goods that we have are sellable or are they not? Whether the, th whether the items in our past or the things that we've done, the things that we've experienced, whether they're worthwhile to keep or we want to we turn those over and we want to give those away, okay? So there is a great deal of misunderstanding about uh, what the four-step inventory is. There's many things that you can find on the internet and I've often, I heard a saying the other day that, it, that everything on the internet uh, is true. And that, that was signed by Abraham Lincoln. So the idea here is that please avoid, uh, please avoid unreliable sources. Uh, made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. There's three, three, three lists uh, that individuals make, Stacy. Three lists. There's, there's resentments, there's fears, and there's sex. Okay? So what do we do? With, contrary to popular belief, the four-step inventory is not from your earliest recollection until five minutes ago. You write everything down. That would take forever. So three steps, resentments, fears, and sex. So in a resentment list, we make four columns, four columns. In the first column, we say what that resentment is. So what would be, what would be without getting into great detail, what would be a resentment of yours? A resentment you have in your life that you've been holding on to? Um, maybe not applying for a to go to a certain school not that applying I wanted to go to. And you're still holding a little bit of resentment on that? 
Um, yeah. Okay. And my guess of that resentment would be against yourself. Yes. Okay. Ideal. Ideal. So in the first one, we put that what that what the resentment is, and then we put what it affects. Okay. It might affect your self-esteem. It might affect your self-concept. It might affect your pocketbook. It might affect relationships, your health, anything in that life. Then in the third column, we put what it was. Okay. What was that resentment? In the however, the fourth column, Maria, is the most important one. Okay, and that's the part I played in it. Remember, this is not another person's inventory. Okay, this is not another person's inventory. This is a list of our resentments, our resentments that are impacting us today. Uh, generally, what we do, if it's a fleeting thought, if it runs through your ears, write it down. Okay, you and another qualified individual called a sponsor would go through this list at the end and filter it down to what are the most uh, grosser defects that are separating you uh, from happiness in your life. Um, do you think do you think all well, do you think most people are different, Maria? Yes. Do you think so? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you think most people are different? Really and truly? Okay. Do you think that most people seek happiness? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that most people try to deal and avoid suffering? Mm -hmm. So how are people that different? True. <laughs> that's true. When we boil it Point down me. to when we boil it down to that, and that's basically what we're trying to do here. Okay, we're trying to find happiness. We're trying to deal under deal with suffering in an appropriate way and try to avoid it. So remember, we look at our part in it, and there's very few resentments in your life that you didn't have some small part in. Some small part in. So the idea here is that you're exactly right. As we begin to make this resentment list, uh, generally uh, we find that ourselves percolate right to the top of it because most of them are we have against ourselves. and as we get further into the steps when we get to making amends and forgiveness uh, the hardest thing to do in any type of recovery and we're all in recovery from something are we not the hardest thing to do is forgive people leave out of this inventory is the fear of being found out the fear of being found out so I'm sure that you have something you have something I have something everyone has something that they've repressed that they've held back in their life that they never ever want to be brought to the light of day again would that be true mm -hmm. would that be true Stacy well of course so what that does is create a large stone it's like carrying around our life with this huge stone on us okay and this huge stone have you ever met people that when they've, they've had an experience and they, have you ever heard the phrase, I felt like a weight was lifted from me? Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So th this is what this is, Stacy. Mm -hmm. This is when you take that stone, you take that weight from you, and you actually become free. Okay? So the fear of being found out. Remember that it's our secrets that keep us sick. It truly is. And as we always say, secrets are like vampires. When they come on into the sunlight, they vanish. They vanish. They're, they're exposed. It's like telling the truth. You only have to tell it once. Mm -hmm. It may be like spitting out tax. <laughs> However, you only have to tell it once and it definitely improves your memory, does it not? Mm -hmm. Now, the sex part of it is one of the most misunderstood inventories. It's not your orientation. It's not the consensual partners that you've had. It's not the acrobatic positions you've been in. It's where you've been dishonest honest dishonest or selfish in an emotional or relationship with another human being where you've been selfish or dishonest in an emotional or a sexual relationship with another human being and who has not okay who has not we've all we've all used people shamelessly in our lives because at some point in our lives perhaps we've been selfish and self-centered have, we not, have you ever been that way yes absolutely and Maria mm -hmm. of course and we all have been however that can be a good thing when we it helps us deal through life. However, when we hurt people in a selfish or dishonest way, then 
we we want to we want to look that. And remember, this is not give her guilt. This is to bring those regrets out and turn them into something productive. We want to bring them out into the sunshine. We want to bring them out to, into the light of day. Right? Okay. So as twelve step recovery is a spiritual based program, where we were the true like any type of. It's not a religion, however, most faith spiritualities attempt to remove the bonds and barriers, the obstacles that separate you from the divine, the creator, a higher power, whatever whatever you want to say it, okay? So these boulders are in, in the way of, of a, a connection and a bond with the universe, the divine, the all, God, whatever you want to call it, okay? So we make a conscious decision to be ready, to be ready, to make a decision to have the creator, God, the divine, remove these defects of characters. That's a decision, is it not? And we've gone over the three frogs on the log, right? Yes. Okay. Three frogs on a log, they all made a decision to jump. How many have left on a log? All of them. All of them. All of them. <laughs> because all they did was make a decision, correct? Mm -hmm. So the idea here is that in number seven, then we take the action. We ask the Creator, we ask God, we ask the Divine to remove these defects of character. We willingly, we, talk, we always talk about choice, we make a choice to be willingly turn these over. We make a choice. Do we not? Right. Do we not? So the idea here is to not to delve into someone's guilt and shame. The idea is is to take those ruminations, to take those stones, and bring them out in, in the light of day and give them away. And hopefully you'd become lighter. Mm -hmm. Would you become lighter? Absolutely. So, and again, getting back to step number five, where we admit to the creator of the divine and another human being, the exact nature of our wrongs, you sit down with another qualified individual that you have absolute confidence in and you regurgitate all these things to this person. And they're experienced in these type of things. It's an interactive type of type of experience. They share some things in their life, you share some things in yours, and hopefully and hopefully you can both help each other through the process. The idea is to get this out of between your ears, out of your body, get the stones away. Put them out into concrete. Put them out into. Put them out into the public. Put them out into really. Put them out into the sunshine, as we call the sunshine of the spirit. Would you like your Would you like your spirit to be shining? Yeah. Would you like your spirit yeah, to be so shining, Maria? Mm -hmm. Fine, and that's my hope for everyone today. My wish that your your spirit shines in source. Uh, so we'll be uh, we'll be wrapping things up today, and we're going to ask uh, we're going to ask Miss Stacy to let us know, let the individuals know how they can send any comments, criticisms our ways, all are welcome. To continue the conversation, please like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter under Seclair Life. You can also find this and other Grand Rounds on youtube.com backslash Seclair Video and find audio versions on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. And please visit Seclair.com for more about us and other articles on our great blog. And as always, Maria, we give a free prescription, do we not? We do. Do you remember what it is? Um, to go fishing. To go fishing. <laughs> we offer fruits, nuts, and vegetables, unplug your television, and to take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, what do we do? Fish without bait. We fish without bait, <laughs> right. So a life without expectations. So until next time, as always, your uh, your assignment is to be good to yourself and to do an do a act of kindness for another each day. Thank you so much for joining us. Mm -hmm.